Okay, recording is on. Good, good, good. Good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to this course, BC 111 on FATE. Uh, thank you for joining the class. I will be just, I think others will be joining in as well. Thank you for connecting. We're going to pray. And um, after we pray, I will get started, do a little introduction to the course, and we will spend time. Uh, hopefully, we will cover chapter one today, right? So let's just pray together. I just um, want to request somebody just to lead us in prayer. Let me see. Let me ask. Uh, Lubega Collins, Brother Lubega Collins. Would you be able to pray with us, please? And let us start. Father in heaven, we come before you. We thank you for this wonderful day. We know that we are not here because of our power almighty, but we are here because of your grace. Lord, as we are going to start our lecture about faith, Lord, we call upon your Holy Spirit to guide us, to remind us, and also to enable us to do everything as per the direction of our dear pastor. So, Lord, we do call upon also our friends who have not yet joined the class. Lord, please give them grace and favor to meet us when it's not yet too late. We do pray and believe that this class is going to go into peace, but not into pieces. We do pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and everybody say. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Lubega. God bless you. Thank you. All right. Welcome, everybody. Um, amen. Welcome to this class. Now, as we, amen, amen. as we do, um, all the um, course notes uh, will be put up in the classwork section of uh, the Google Classroom. So you just have to download it from there. And also the recordings of these lectures will be available uh, in the classroom section. So if you want to go back and just review um, any lecture, uh, you're welcome to do that as well. Um, I'm just going to quickly go through the uh, two PDFs that uh, have been uploaded uh, and uh, you, know, you could you may have downloaded those PDFs already, or you can download them um, and uh, you know follow along. So uh, this doc, the first PDF, uh, just gives us an overview of what we are going to cover uh, in this course. Uh, of course, um, this this course is on fate, so we're going to be studying fate. Uh, in detail, you know, just spending a lot of time uh, studying what faith is, how do we exercise faith, and how do we walk by faith in God. Um, uh, and so we'll be covering various aspects of faith uh, as we have listed here. Uh, and uh, the whole objective of uh, really is to enable all of us uh, to learn how to walk by faith. And of course, the best way to do it is, you know, put it into practice. So uh, while in this course, we are, we are studying from the word of God, uh, we are learning, we are understanding. I want to encourage each of us to begin to practice it. Just apply it in your life in small ways, um, in whatever ways you can. Uh, the things that we learn, uh, begin to apply it in your life and uh, you, know, you, will, you will be able to grow in this. Uh, some of you may be already familiar with teaching on faith, and so this may add to what you already know and encourage you in your walk of faith. In terms of assessment, we'll have just three simple assessments, September, October, November, uh, based on what we are studying. Uh, and these will be put up in the classwork section in the classroom, and you can just respond to uh, the assessments over there. The grading scheme, you're all familiar with that. and uh, we will be giving you uh, the notes uh, each each week as we progress. We will give you the PDF uh, and you can download it. 
I would also encourage you to download one of our free books, uh, Speak Your Faith. It's available there at apcwo.org slash books. In fact, I'd encourage you just download all our books and make use of it. They're all free. Uh, use them uh, to nurture yourself uh, in, in your uh, spiritual life. So we're going to get started here uh, talk, just giving an introduction to faith, to the whole subject of uh, faith. You know, now um, faith, uh, it's an important theme throughout the Word of God. And uh, why is faith important? You know, why is this whole aspect of faith important? And we will talk about talk more about it, but just by way of introduction, I just want to uh, mention a few things. You know, uh, God gives us gives to us freely by grace. But faith receives what God gives freely by grace. Right? That's why in, in the scriptures you'll find grace and faith are so important. God gives out of his grace. Faith receives what God gives in his grace. And uh, God invites each one of us to come to him in faith and to receive by faith. Right? So and that's important for all of us because, you know, um, we shouldn't think and that, you know, things will just drop off on our lives automatically. Uh, just because God is gracious, God is loving. It is true. God is gracious. God is loving. But then God wants us to pursue in faith and to receive by faith what he gives to us freely by grace. And that's why faith is important for us. And, and, and God is pleased when we do that. He's pleased when we pursue by faith what he gives to us freely by grace. God is pleased when he sees us doing that. The scriptures tell us that, you know, uh, uh, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Or if you put it in the other way, faith pleases God. Right? And so he wants us to pursue by faith what he is making available to us freely by grace, and, and, and it pleases him when we do that. Now, some of you may uh, know about Smith Wigglesworth. You may have read some of his uh, uh, sermons that have been put into books, uh, but he was referred to as an apostle of faith, and he uh, was known to have made this statement. He said, God would pass over a million people in order to touch one person who has faith in him, because faith gets the attention of God. Right? So God passes so many people. There are so many people God could touch, but why does he respond? Why does he touch that person? Very often the answer is because of faith. And God touches that person in response to their faith in him. Right. So but that's why faith is important because it gets the attention of God. So, you know, whatever, you know, we want to receive from God, whether it's healing for our body, whether it's change in our life situations, financially, uh, change in uh, you know, things that are happening, overcoming temptation, overcoming the ad adversity, uh, overcoming difficult situations in life, seeing the blessing of God over our lives, uh, fulfilling the work of the ministry. Every area of our lives, we have to do it by faith because the Bible says we walk by faith. That means everything we do, A to Z, Everything we do in life, it has to come out of faith in God. You know, small things, big things, every area of our life. We have to cause faith in God to bear upon every aspect of our lives because we walk by faith. So these are some of the things we will emphasize as we go through this study on faith. And we will, you know, get into uh, the as practical aspects. How do we exercise faith in God? Uh, how do we receive from God? How do we minister uh, to people in faith? How do we you know, handle situations in faith? So we will break it down and make it very simple, very practical. All right. So to get started, let's go to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. And it's right there on the PDF if you want to turn in your Bible, um, you know, so, uh, and that's also it's fine. Uh, we will start off uh, just by looking at 
uh, Hebrews 11.1, 1, spend some time on it. Um, uh, uh, many refer to that verse of scripture as the Bible definition of faith. So it's good for us to you know, try to understand it uh, and uh, see what it says. So could somebody please read Hebrews 11.1 1 for us? Somebody could just... Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Amen. Thank you. So I'll just read this. This is from the New King James. It says, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Uh, I like to read it from uh, the Amplified Bible, and it's there uh, in the PDF, the Amplified Bible, the classic edition. Uh, this is how it translate, uh, renders that verse. It says, faith is the assurance. And then in brackets, it adds the words, you know, the confirmation, the title deed, of things we hope for being the proof of things we do not see and the conviction of their reality. Faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. So first of all, now let's just try to understand this. Uh, now, just as a general introduction, uh, in the New Testament, we see the words faith and the belief, faith and belief. You know, have faith in God or believe in God. Now we see the words, but what, what I want us to understand is that both these words come from the same root Greek word. Just that one is a noun and one is a verb, but they come from the same root word. So really, faith and believing, they are really the same thing. Just that faith is a noun and belief is a verb. Belief has to do with action. Faith is the, 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 the thing that you're having faith in or in. So, you know, and um, I've just written some statements here. You know, one is uh, believing is the act of having faith. You know, if you want to look at that, they, they mean the same thing. So we will use them interchangeably, but believing is the acting or the act of having faith, right? And uh, faith, uh, uh, as we see it, it is, uh, it is believing something with conviction and constancy. That means uh, it's faith is credence, that is believing something with conviction, with that firm assurance, confidence, and constancy. That means you're not changing over time, right? So faith is believing with conviction and constancy. Now, I want us to uh, recognize that uh, faith, uh, while faith requires knowledge, that means you need to know whom you believe and what you believe. Uh, faith is just doesn't stop there with knowledge. You know, sometimes we make that mistake, right? We uh, we think just because I know about something, I know about God, or I know about His miracles, I know about His power. That means I believe it, not necessarily, right? Uh, the way you can tell you really believe is if we will act in accordance to it. Right? So faith goes more than just knowing. Faith is our willingness to act according to what we know and believe. Right, So faith really is action. We'll emphasize that as we go along. Now, I want us to uh, look back here on uh, Hebrews 11.1. 1, and what are the two things that faith has to do with? He's saying faith is the substance of things hoped for. Things hoped hoped for and things not seen, the evidence of things not seen. So faith 
has to do with these two kinds of things. Things hoped for and things not seen. Things hoped for means things that you're looking forward to, things you're desiring for, things that you, uh, you know, you want to have, hoped for, things hoped for, and things not seen. That means these are unseen realities. So faith really has to do with things hoped for, things that are out in the future, uh, things that are not there right now, but things that you really want to bring into this realm, into the now, things hoped for, things desired for, and things not seen, things that are unseen, things that are not in this natural realm. So faith has to do with these two things, according to Hebrews 11.1. 1. It has to do with things hoped for and things not seen. So let's get into some practical thoughts on that. Things hoped for. What do you and I hope for? You know, some of us may say, well, I am hoping that, you know, the promises that I'm reading in the Bible will be fulfilled in my life. That's a good thing. Uh, some of us may say, well, I hope that, you know, uh, the things that God has put in my heart, I will be able to achieve, I will be able to accomplish. There are dreams that I have. Uh, I want to see those dreams fulfilled. Well, faith works in relation to those things because those are things hoped for. Um, then some of us will say, well, you know, God has promised something, but it is a, a spiritual promise. It is in the spiritual realm. I want to see it happen. Well, things not seen, things in the unseen realm. Faith is in relation to those things. What God has promised for us in the spiritual realm, and we want to bring it into the natural realm. Right? So faith concerns things hoped for and things not seen. It's in relation to those things. But what is faith in relation to things hoped for, in relation to things not seen? What is it? He says two things. It is the substance, it is the evidence. It is the substance, it is the evidence. Faith, what is faith? It is the substance, it is the evidence of things you're hoping for, things that you cannot yet see. But faith is the substance, it is the evidence of such kinds of things, things you're hoping for, things you cannot yet see in your life, but you want it there. Now, what is the meaning of the word substance and the word evidence? The word substance, uh, as you can see how they put it in uh, the, uh, the uh, Amplified Bible, and if you also look at the Greek, I've mentioned it in the, the notes a little below. The word substance simply means uh, the the groundwork, the firm, the, the word literal, the word literally there, uh, hypostasis. It means groundwork. Uh, it is the reality. It's the groundwork. But it also is a word in the Greek that was used to refer to title deeds. Title deeds means you know proof of ownership. When you buy something, uh, you get a title deed for it. You know that that you are the owner of it. So, you know, let's say, example, you buy, uh, let's say you buy a car or you buy a house or something, then you get a piece of paper that says, uh, you know, this property located at such and such a place uh, was sold to, and they put your name on it. Or same thing with the, buying a car, you, you know, this car vehicle number, this, this, this was sold to, they put your name. And that piece of paper is your proof of ownership. It says, you know, that thing belongs to this person. That's the title deed. So what, what this verse is saying, faith is the assurance. It is the confidence and it is the, it is the substance and it is the title deed, the proof of ownership of what? Of things hoped for. That means there are things I'm hoping for desiring for. I don't have it now, but I want that. I desire that. But my faith is the substance of those things. 
My faith is the proof of ownership of those things. That is, my faith says, I have it. I have the substance of the things I'm hoping for. The thing I'm hoping for is actually out there. It's not here. I don't have it yet. But my faith is the substance of that. It's saying I already have it. My faith is the title deed of things I'm hoping for. That means it says I, 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 I own it. But actually it's out there. It's things hoped for. But my faith is the substance. It's the title deed of what I'm hoping. And it is also the evidence of unseen things. That word evidence, if you look it up in the Greek, it simply means conviction. Our proof, conviction. So faith is the conviction of things not seen. That means, uh, I like the way the Amplified Bibles puts it. It says, it is it perceives as a real fact what is not revealed to the senses. That means faith is the conviction of things not seen. They are still in the spiritual realm. My senses don't recognize it, but I'm convinced about it because God said it because God promised it. So I'm convinced about it, of things not seen. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to repeat what I said about Hebrews 11, 1, and after that I will pause and we will take some questions. So in case you know you want me to explain anything or have any questions, we will take it up. But let me repeat what I just said. In Hebrews 11, 1, we see the Bible definition of what faith is. We said that, you know, in the Bible, faith and belief come from the same root word. So, except that faith is a noun and belief is a verb. So, really, faith is, or believing is the act of having faith. And, if, you know, we need to act on it, what we believe. Faith has to do with two things, according to this verse. Things hoped for things not yet seen, things hoped for, things that you're desiring, longing to have, things hoped for, things not seen, things, they're unseen things, they're not there yet. They are maybe in the spiritual realm. But faith is the substance of things hoped for. That word substance, it's the groundwork, it's reality. It also means title deed, proof of ownership. So the things that I hope you're hoping for, but your faith is the substance of it. Your faith is as good as you having it because it's the substance of that. And it is also the title deed. It's a proof of ownership of that, things you're hoping for, but your faith is saying, I got it. And faith is the evidence, the conviction of things not seen. That means it's out in the future, it's unseen, but you're convinced. So that is faith. It's your proof of ownership. It's your conviction of what you're hoping for, of things not yet seen. So I'm going to pause at this moment, and I would like to take up any questions you may have uh, on what we just uh, looked at Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 any questions any thoughts on that any clarification you need was it clear did you all understand it any questions please is it clear okay go ahead Divya. you have a question go ahead yeah, I, I was just, uh, I don't know whether it will be covered in the subsequent uh, chapters, but uh, I was thinking, what is the difference, the real difference between faith and hope? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. So, uh, yes, we, I think we have a chapter that comes up uh, talking about faith and hope. But let me just give a brief uh, uh, few statements on that. Um, Faith has to do with now, 
hope has to do with the future. For example, we all have the hope of being with Jesus uh, after we leave this world. Whether, you know, the Lord comes and takes us home in the rapture or whether, you know, we die and go to heaven. Uh, we have this hope that we will be with Jesus. It's a hope. Hope because it's not something we're expecting now. We know it's there in the future and we leave it there in the future. I am not by faith trying to pull that in the here. No. I believe it. But it's in the future. I leave it there. So that is a hope I have because I'm confident about it, but I've left it in the future. So hope is in the future. And I think uh, uh, Romans 8, right? uh, Romans 8 explains that. Uh, I'll just give you one verse on that, Romans chapter 8. Um, uh, Romans 8 and verse 24 and 25, Romans 8, 24 and 25. Devia, you want to read that? Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Uh, Romans 8, 24 and 25. For we were saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. <clears throat> Yeah, so he's saying, see, if you if, if it has to do with the now, then that's not hope, right? Hope is what we do not see, and hope is something we are waiting for. But we hope inspires endurance, right? With endurance, we are waiting for it in the future. Whereas faith has to do with the now. That means, God, I there are things I desire, things I don't see, but I want to bring it in now. Example, healing. Right. So think about two things, healing for our body versus a glorified body. A glorified body is something we hope for, meaning it's going to happen, but it's in the future. And I cannot bring it into the present because God will do that in his appointed time. Our bodies, our mortal will put on immortality and uh, death will be swallowed up by victory and we will have glorified bodies. But healing is something we can go after now because it's God's promise, right? Uh, so I can desire for it. Maybe if there's healing I need in a certain part of my body, I can desire for that because God promised it. Um, it may be unseen. That means my, my physical senses may not uh, at this moment experience it. But what is faith of faith is the substance of things I desire. What do I desire? Healing. It's the conviction of unseen things, of unseen realities. What, does it, what my natural senses don't perceive yet, healing. And I'm convinced about it. So faith brings into the now what God has promised. Or faith brings into the now what I desire. Whereas hope leaves in the future what God has promised. Hope leaves in the future uh, what uh, what uh, uh, what you know uh, what God has uh, promised. What we're looking for, right? Uh, so that is the difference. I hope I explained it. Yeah, yeah, Pastor. But both faith and hope, um, both of them require faith, right? Yeah, yeah. So both are important. Both are important. So <laughs> let, let's put it like this. Hope is a precursor to faith. Hope is a precursor to faith. Hope pulls faith out of our hearts. Right? 
So, so there is there there are elements that we hope for which we leave in the future, but there are elements that we hope for which we want to bring from the realm of hope into the now. Example: I hope to be able to bless people. That's a hope, which I want to be able to pull into the now. Right? That means I want to really bless people, or I hope I will be able to you know, minister God's word. I hope I will be able to pastor a church someday. Somebody may have a hope that, you know, I hope I can, uh, you know, uh, bless whatever, you know, we, we, we have hope. So that's that element, that aspect of hope, we want to bring it into the now. Uh, okay. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Pastor. Okay. All right, I see Paul's comment uh, passed. I think there should be a separate person assigned to admit people into the class. Oh, you're waiting for 30 minutes. Okay, Paul, I am sorry uh, about that. But the way Google Classroom works is we set up an auto, it has an auto admit feature. Uh, that means, uh, so like we don't uh, physically admit people. It's, it's auto admit, so you can come in, but I think uh, what at least what I've observed is uh, when I change my screen, that is when I go off this Google Meet and I'm looking at the PDF or so, uh, people tend to get stuck. The auto admin feature doesn't work automatically. And I think that's why uh, it, this happens. So maybe I would suggest if you don't mind, uh, join the class a few minutes before the class starts. So, you know, if the class is starting at nine o'clock, just join at 8.58 or 8.59. So then what happens is uh, when I start the class and if I have to move to a PDF or if I have to move to another screen on my computer, uh, uh, you know, and sometimes the auto admit feature doesn't work, you can still, you'll still be there. Uh, but there is nobody who's controlling it. It's an auto admit feature in Google Classroom. Okay, so maybe that would be a a good solution. Just join for a couple of minutes before the class starts. Uh, it should be fine. Uh, then you won't get stuck. Right. I hope yeah, that would be okay. Okay. God yes. bless you, Paul. Thank you. Amen. Uh, all right. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. So that's a very interesting question about faith and hope, and we need that. You know, like we all are familiar with First Corinthians thirteen. It says there is faith, hope, and love. Faith, hope, and love. And of course, one day faith and hope will be done away with because everything, you know, we will be seeing the Lord face to face and only love will remain. But, um, but there is a distinction there between faith and hope. Both are important. And you know, if, you, if you see really, um, uh, as I said, there are things that we hope for, but Hebrews 11, one says, you know, faith brings that hope into this realm. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the title deed of things hoped for. Yeah. And uh, faith is also the conviction of unseen things, things that our natural senses say, well, I can't feel it. Uh, I can't you know, experience it right now. But faith is convinced about it. And the reason is because of who God is and his word, right? And we will, we will come to that. Uh, so uh, Hebrews 11, 1 is a very beautiful definition of faith. Let me look at some other questions in the chat. Uh, Titus asks, um, sorry, can faith? Sorry, uh, Avadesh, um, your question is, can faith call a prophecy word in our life? Um, I'm not sure if I understood that question over this. Um, can faith? Oh, I, 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 did you mean can faith fulfill a prof prophetic word over our life? Is that what, what your question is, Avadesh? Yes, sir. Right. Okay. Uh, so I think faith, your question faith, is. Uh, what is like a prophecy word? Okay, okay, I'm trying to understand. Um, maybe I, this is what I understand from your question. Uh, maybe somebody gives us a prophecy and I, I think your question is, can faith cause that prophecy to be fulfilled, 
right? And that's important, right? So faith is needed in order to fulfill prophecy or prophetic words over our life. Uh, I'll just give you two scriptures on that. One is Second Chronicles uh, chapter 20 and, uh, and verse 20. Again, it's a familiar verse in Second Chronicles 20 and verse 20. Uh, uh, the prophet there says, believe the Lord your God and you will be established. Believe his prophets and you will prosper. Right, Second Chronicles 20 and verse 20. So we have to believe. We have to believe the prophetic word. And uh, uh, another scripture is First Timothy chapter 1, verse 18, where uh, Paul is telling Timothy, he says, you know, with the words of prophecy that were spoken over your life, First Timothy chapter 1 and verse 18, Paul says, um, I want you to wage a good warfare with the prophecy spoken over your life. You know, so um, while prophecies are spoken, we have a responsibility. We must wage a good warfare. We must fight a good fight with those prophecies. Okay, so that's where faith comes in. Next question is uh, from Titus. When does the faith, uh, when does the faith hope for comes to reality? How much time does it take? <laughs> That's an interesting question, Titus. Um, you know, uh, there is there is no like set time. Uh, we will see in scripture. And we'll also see in our own experience that there is no set time. I, I can't say it'll take five minutes, five hours, or five days for something to be fulfilled. Yeah, there's no set time like that. What the Bible does teach us is to have endurance until we see the promise fulfilled. You know, so Hebrews chapter six, verse twelve, uh, and all of these scriptures we will be touching on. You know, as we as we develop this course, uh, it's good you're asking questions, and uh, you know, it's good to repeat things as well. Uh, Hebrews six and verse twelve, the Bible says, you know, follow the faith of those, or follow the example of those who, through faith and patience. Inherit the promises. You know, faith and patience inherit the promise. That means God has given a promise. You have faith, but you need patience to receive it. So if you just look at two examples. Example, in Mark 11, we will be studying that Jesus cursed the fig tree. But when he cursed the fig tree, nothing happened. At that moment, nothing happened. Because he cursed the fig tree. He said, no fruit will grow on you now on. Nothing happened. The disciples were there. They looked at it. Nothing happened. They kept walking. But the next day, the next day, when they passed by, they saw the fig tree. And it was dried up. And they were also excited, they said, Master, Master, you know, look, the fig tree you cursed is dried up. So it didn't happen instantly. It didn't happen at that moment. But they, you know, we don't know, you know it, it may have, I don't know, it may have happened five minutes later, or it may have happened 10 minutes later, or whenever. But they just saw it the next day. Right? But we can say it didn't happen instantly. They saw it the next day. Right? So there was a time element there. But then you also think about Abraham. God gave him a promise and it took 25 years for him to have Isaac. You know, so there's a different time element. And Hebrews 6, 12 is actually pointing to Abraham, says, follow the faith of Abraham, who through faith and patience inherited the promise. Right? So there's a time element. There's no fixed time. Uh, we just, uh, uh, you know, have to walk with God, right? I see now 
said Kenu. Okay. Uh, how do we know we have the right amount of faith? So um, I, I would respond to that question. There's a question here by Sitkeno asking, how do, you know, have, have the right, how do we know we have the right amount of faith? Because you said if you have faith as a mustard seed, you can move the mountain. I think there are two things to look at. One is, uh, which we will learn, see faith will produce. So if your faith is producing, then you know you have the right amount of faith. Uh, if your faith is not producing, then like Paul wrote to the Thessalonians, that we need to find out what is lacking in our faith. This is First Thessalonians 3 and verse 10. I'm just, I'm just uh, referencing First Thessalonians 3 verse 10. Paul says, you know, he's writing to Thessalonians. He says, you know, I want to perfect what is lacking in your faith. You know, so if our faith is not producing, we need to ask God, God, uh, what is lacking in my faith? Because Jesus, if you have faith, it will move the mountain. So the one way to know that there is that faith is, is it producing? If my faith is not producing, then I need to go to God and say, God, what is lacking in my faith? Right? And that's what Paul writes to the Thessalonians, First Thessalonians 3, 10. He says, you know, I want to come and I, per I want to perfect what is lacking in your faith. And uh, we need to have that happen to us. That word perfect means to fill up, you know. So you can imagine a, 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 a cup, uh, water, maybe is three-fourths away. It's not full. There's something lacking. And so, you know, you fill it up so that it's full, right? So you bring it to completion. So Paul is telling them, you know, we need to find out what's lacking in the faith. So we, we will do that as we go through. We will learn how to fill that up so that our faith can produce. So one way to know that you have the right amount of faith is, is your faith producing? If it's producing, then you have the faith that you need. Uh, the other thing also is that faith goes through a process of maturity, right? You know, the same word perfect that's used here in First Thessalonians 3 verse 10, you also see in James chapter 2, uh, and again, we will be looking at all of these things as we journey through faith uh, through this course. I'm just answering questions. Um, in James chapter 2 and verse 22, James 2 verse 22, uh, the, James is uh, writing about the faith of Abraham. And he says, by works, faith was made perfect. By works. Faith was made perfect. Or that means his faith came to a place of perfection, a maturity through works. So sometimes we start off with faith, but we need to do some works. We need to act our faith. We need to put our faith into action so that the action brings our faith to a level of maturity where it can produce. So if, if I find that there's something lacking in my faith, what can I do? Well, James 2.22 says, our works bring our faith to maturity, to a place where it can produce. So if my faith is not producing, how do I perfect what is lacking in my faith? One of the ways is I need to start acting on my faith because through my actions, my faith is brought to perfection, to a place where it can produce I hope uh, did, did we all understand that is it is it okay yeah okay so we will be covering uh, you know all of these things uh, in, in depth as we go along but uh, um, I'm just touching on it because uh, you know you've asked some questions very good so what we've done so far is Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 okay Faith has to do with two things. Things hoped for. Things that you are desiring. Things you're hoping. Things hoped for. And things not seen. That means it's not there right now. Sorry. It's not there right now in your life. Things not seen. Your senses cannot perceive it. But faith has to do with those kinds of things. 
And what is faith? It is the substance or the title deed. It is the substance of things hoped for. You're hoping for it, but faith says, I have it. It's, I can, it's almost like I can feel it. I can touch it. It's where, where is it? It's, it's in my heart. Right? So faith is the substance. Your faith is the substance of things you're hoping for. You know, it's, it's a hope, but you've got the substance of it. For you, it's real. Or like we said, that same word means title deed, proof of ownership. So in your heart, you're saying, I have it. Then somebody says, how do you have it? Give me proof. My faith is my title deed. My faith is my proof of ownership. My faith says, it's mine. My faith is the substance of what I'm hoping for. My faith is the title deed. It's the proof of ownership of what I'm hoping for. That's faith. And secondly, Hebrews 11, 1, Faith is the conviction of things not seen. And you can't see it. Your natural senses say, I can't feel it. It doesn't seem like it's there. But faith is convinced about it. It is mine. I, I have it. So that is faith. Faith is the substance, the title deed. Faith is the conviction, the confidence, the assurance in our hearts. Is that okay? So we're going to build upon this. We will um, take a quick break uh, and we will come back in 10 minutes and we will build on this further. Any questions, please feel free to ask. Um, um, and uh, yeah, so let me just quickly answer Elisha's question and then uh, we will go for a break, all right? So Elisha has a question, how different is this faith, what we're discussing from the gift of faith talked about in 1 Corinthians 12? Uh, that's a good, very good question, all right? So what we will learn as we journey through this course is, and what we're dealing with is our personal faith, right? Faith is, each one of us have been given a measure of faith. So Romans, Romans chapter 12 and verse 3. Romans 12 verse 3, we will be looking at it. It says that God has given to us a measure of faith. So every person has been given faith. Faith is in your heart. Uh, it's there. You have the ability to believe God. Uh, and then you nurture your faith. You grow your faith in God. Right? The gift of, so that faith you carry in your heart all the time. It's your faith in God. It's, it's in your heart. The gift of faith, which we read in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 7 through 11, is a supernatural momentary impartation of faith in God to achieve a certain task. So the gift of faith is given to you at a certain moment by the Holy Spirit for you to believe God but it's momentary meaning it's given to you for that moment of time and it is for a specific task to minister to somebody in a certain way right so so the gift of faith it's it's there it you operate it I mean it works and then it's gone Whereas your personal faith is something you grow in, you walk in, you nurture. So what we are going to learn about in this course is about our personal faith. How do we grow in our faith and how do we walk in it? So this is faith you can use anytime. Whereas the gift of faith is given to you by the Holy Spirit at that moment to minister to somebody. So example, if you're ministering, you know, uh, if there's a person who's sick, and the Holy Spirit imparts faith and you just minister to that person in faith and you declare the word to him and say, God, the Lord Jesus Christ heals you, rise up and walk. Well, that's a momentary impartation of faith in, in your heart to minister that way to that person. Or somebody comes to you and you just release a word to them and say, you know, uh, I, I say in, uh, you know, in, 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 in 
you know, within 24 hours, this is going to happen and this will change in your life. You're not speaking from the top of your head. You're releasing faith and you're speaking that because there was a gift of faith given to you and you speak it and, uh, and, and it causes that thing to take place in their lives, right? So that's the difference. One is momentary. One is something you have all the time, okay? All right, one last question. Is faith a gift of God or a fruit of God? So... Uh, a faith is uh, is something that God puts in our hearts, but we develop that and we grow in it. Right? Uh, God, so Romans twelve three, God has dealt to each one a measure of faith, so God gives it to us, but then we grow in that, we develop that faith. Right, so God gives it. We are saved by grace through faith, which God has given to us, but we develop our faith in God. We grow in God. Okay. We'll talk more about that, uh, Rebecca. Okay. All right. So let's take a 10 minute break and we'll come back right after a break and continue this. And we'll take up more questions. There are more questions. Okay. God bless. See you in 10 minutes. <laughs> 